Hi guys, welcome to class. Um, so I'm back after a couple of weeks, so hopefully it's a good good session. We're going to be looking at British slang and British idioms um, in this class. So we're going to talk about loads of different slang from uh, from the UK, um, expressions that we say in the UK, um, and we're going to practice uh, using them. So it's a new time for me, so I'm hoping there's some new students um, there. Usually I don't teach at this time. But uh, Rod Rodrigo is there. Hi, can you Hi. hear me? Yes, good to speak with you. How are you? I'm fine. Perfect. And you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, thanks. Um, and Rodrigo, have we spoken before or is this the first time? No, it's, it, it's the first time. The first time, okay. So welcome, Rodrigo. And um, do I pronounce your name correctly and where do you come from? Uh, I come from Brazil. It's cool. So in South America, I thought this time would be good for South American students, right? So um, what time is it there? It's about 10 o'clock at night or what time is yes, it? Yes, it's 10 p.m. So it's a bit better, yeah? So usually my times um, are in your midnight, yeah? So I hope you can speak more, more often. Cool. And Chow is there. And Chow, whoa, 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 that's big. Long, worry. long time no see. <laughs> long time no see. How have you been? Uh, I've been pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah. Cool. And where are you, where are you at the moment? Because there's lots okay. of seats. Uh, the refectory of my university. Refectory and stuff. Yes, yeah? so this is where you eat. Um, and are the tables individual, or do you sit in a group? It looks like you've got like individual tables. Nope, just a common table. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it looks like they're like separate. Yeah. So you have your own desk and stuff. That's that's cool. Um, yeah. And Hazel managed to wake up. How the hell did you do that? Hello, Martin. Of course, I, I can. I managed. It's two o'clock in the morning. What? Um, it's four o'clock actually. Your time, yeah. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Two o'clock GMT, but four o'clock in the morning at uh, my time. How did you manage it? I, I told you that I don't sleep too much, too many hours. Okay, and what can you sleep on? So, what's the minimum you need to uh, to be able to function? Uh, Usually I sleep five uh, hours. Five hours or so, yeah. So for me, it's too yes. too little, but usually it's so, yeah. So that's that's cool. But when I was younger, I forced myself drinking m many coffees to not sleep many hours, and now if I s want to sleep more, I cannot sleep. <laughs> and now you're regretting this training that you. Did. Okay. But good to speak. You're sometimes, again, sometimes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Nice to, nice to see you again, Martin. It's been two two weeks or so. Three weeks. Two weeks, three weeks. Two, three, I can't oh. remember. Maybe even three. I've forgotten how to work everything yet. So I had some technical <laughs> problems last week. Really, really bad problems, but now it's working, so hopefully it's good. Okay, so keep calm and occupy Gezi. Nihan. Ha <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hi, Mark. Oh, it's Nihan. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, changed your I profile. Changed That's what I was thinking if it's the same one. Okay, so how have you been? Thank you, Martin. Uh, I'm doing great. How about you? Not not too bad, but what's the time there? Because you used to come in the later session. Yeah, four in the morning. Ah, the same as me. Yeah. Guys are committed, <laughs> yes? Okay. And can you, Hazel, is this a good time for you? Is it better than later? Uh, it's better because if it's later, I am at work. Now I don't work. Okay, let me try, I'll try and nap this slot every day because you said um, in the evenings your time, but that's not, not possible. So I'll try and get this slot if that's if that's okay for you. It yes, it's okay. This time it's okay for me. Perfect, cool. Okay, so let's get started. Um, and we're talking about British idioms and things like this. So, Hazel, have you learnt any? I sent you a message with a couple. Did you receive <laughs> my message? On Facebook? Yes, yes. But um, let me think what uh, kind of um, idioms did you send me? I now it's 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 too early for me, so I'll um, come with one new one. Okay. Uh, to back to square one. To get back to square one. Yeah. To, to get back, back to square one. Yes, back to square one. Sorry, square one. Really, you should write it like that. But I'm lazy. Okay. So to get back to square one means what? Alex has just joined to us. To start yes. again or to begin again something. Yeah. To start from the beginning. Yeah. So something didn't mm -hmm. work. You start from square one. Um, how can you say it? 
There's another another expression you couldn't. Ah, oh, I forgot it. So wait, wait, wait. Start from square one, or start from scratch. You can say, yeah. Scratch, yes, scratch. scratch. Write this down. Okay, so. Oh, one second. Scratch. Start from scratch just means start from from the beginning. Okay, Alex is there. Yeah. How are you, Alex? I'm fine. <laughs> is, this, Thanks. is this the first time we've spoken, or have we spoken before? No, no, it's the first time. Perfect. And where are you from? Spain. Cool. And which part of Spain? Madrid. Okay. Uh, Hazel, you have competition. I think it's even earlier in Spain, right? So it's three, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning in Spain. <laughs> yeah, right. Alex, do you ever sleep? No, I haven't. <laughs> but it's good, it's good, it's good. Okay, so welcome, Alex. Uh, good to speak with you. We're talking about uh, slang and idiom, so from the UK. Um, and Hazel suggested to get back to square one, to go back to square one. And this means to start from scratch, to go from the beginning. Okay? Okay. Have you heard this before? No, I haven't. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so let's practice it. Ciao. Something that you've gone from square one on. So something recently that maybe you cocked up, if I can say this, to cock something. Back to square one. Cock okay. something up. Oh, so, so, to cock something up, sorry. Okay. Something up means to do something badly. Okay, so you've made a mistake somehow, uh, and you've had to go back to square one. Um, let me think. Is there? Uh, nope. I think, fortunate, fortunately, no. So it's okay, yeah. So you haven't cocked anything up recently. Hazel, what about you? You suggested that maybe <laughs> there's an example. And how did you come across this one? Um, actually, I um, joined uh, two years ago to another British um, teacher's classes, um, and I <laughs> learned from him several idioms. Okay, yes, it's quite quite useful. But have you done yes. something recently where you've had to go back to uh, square one? So I'm thinking Arabic, yeah? So how's that going? <laughs> yes, it's going very uh, difficult. It's very, very, it's going very hard yet. And I uh, indeed uh, went back to square one several times because I uh, kept uh, forgetting the alphabet all the time. There are a, a very different kind of uh, writing in, uh, in the middle, at the beginning, and at the end, the same letter, they write uh, differently. Yep. And I have to go back to square one several times. So you, you try to learn it, but you can't remember it. So you have to go back to the beginning and somehow try and push it in your brain some, somehow. yeah. But it's working at the moment. How are you progressing? So what's your level now? Are you at C2 Arabic yet? Oh, <laughs> no, no ways. <laughs> I, I am only, only very beginner because I just learned how to read, but I read very slowly. They, this is a very um, strange and very difficult language. Uh, nothing resembles with uh, our languages, British or French or German or Romanian. No, so it's no difficult way. To, like with German, what I found is that sometimes if I didn't know the word, and I did this in a couple of oral exams, um, it's just, oh, what's the word, what's the word? Say it in English. Or say it in using some with some kind of accent, yeah, and, and just fingers crossed, yes. But with some like <laughs> yes. Arabic, you can't do it. I don't know if anyone else has done this. Um, I guess Ricardo, your language. So, Ricardo, did you just join? Hello, Martin. Hello, Ricardo. Good to speak with you. We've definitely spoken before. But Ricardo, are you, do you speak Spanish? No, I'm from Brazil. Portuguese then. Okay, Portuguese. Have you Portuguese. ever done? Have you ever done this when you're speaking English? So we're talking about expressions um, and things like this, but have you ever done this thing where you don't know an English word, but you think of the Portuguese word and you say it in some kind of English accent? I don't understand, sorry. No way. Okay. So Hazel was saying she's having problems with Arabic. Hazel is learning Arabic, but she's saying the language is not like any other language. It's completely okay. individual. And I said, when I was learning German, sometimes if I didn't know the word in German, I would say it in English, but with some kind of German accent, okay? Because I didn't know. 
And I'm wondering if it's like this with you, Ricardo, with Portuguese. If it is happening with me? Yeah, if you've ever done this. You don't know a word in English, so you say it in Portuguese with an English accent. Portuguese with English accent? Yeah. Uh, okay, but uh, what can I what can I say? Okay, so I don't know. What's the? I, I don't know. I don't know. But just as an example, um, yeah, maybe maybe not. Maybe not off the top of your head. But that's that's cool. We'll, we'll come back. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, no, I can't speak Spanish, Lucas. I I want to, but I can't. Yeah. So I've heard it's one of the easiest ones for a um, English speaker to learn. Yeah, but I'm not not sure if that's true. Um, has anyone else got experience learning Spanish? Alex, have you learned Spanish? You don't need to. You're in Spain. <laughs> Ciao. <have> yeah. <laughs> mm, nope. But I I used to. I learned. I have learned Japanese for one year. But I recently I gave up. Yeah. And the script. Sometimes the script is the similar, right? Would you say? Yes. Yes. They yes. They use the yeah. Chinese script. Sometimes. Actually, when yes, and when I start to learn Japanese, I always. Sometimes I just mispronounce the Japanese to Chinese. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I just use Chinese accent to pronounce Japanese. Yeah. Does it I work? Just get an... Sometimes it works, but sometimes it is totally different. And can you read Japanese? So if you get something completely in Japanese, can you yeah, kind of yeah, understand? Yeah, I, I think I can understand most of them. Okay, so it's probably similar. I don't know if it's the same between Spanish and Portuguese, for example. Okay, let's go to another one. So that was one expression from Hazel. Has anyone got any others? So I remember that. one of your um, idioms. Okay. And I written here to all night or something. Pull an all nighter. Yes. <laughs> it can arise from a couple of different situations. It could be, uh, for example, you cannot sleep uh, because yes. of an exam the next day, so you stay up all night. Yes. Yeah? So you're pulling an all nighter, meaning you never go to sleep. Um, or it could be something like a party. So if you're having a party throughout the whole night, you'll pull up all night. So it depends on the context. It just means you can't sleep because of a, a reason. Okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, Alex, it sounds like he's pulling it all night with Hazel. Um, Alex, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, maybe that's appropriate. Okay, so Alex, um, what time will you go to sleep? Or have you already slept? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I don't know. Depend depending on the day, but today I think when the class is over, I will go to sleep. <laughs> so one hour or so. Um, Chow, does that happen with you? For example, when you're preparing for an exam, do you ever pull an all-nighter? Nope, definitely not. But no. uh, I would sleep a little bit earlier than before, actually. Okay, yeah, so a friend is looking, saying, what the hell are you doing? Okay, so, um, it depends, but usually you'd, you'd sleep. Hazel, it sounds like, does it a lot. Uh, but Nihan, what about you? Do you ever pull an all-nighter, and what situation would you get yourself into to do this? <clears throat> I have uh, sleeping issues, uh, uh, but in university, when I, uh, I try to uh, uh, prepare to examines, I cannot sleep, but I can't study either. Okay, so you just can't rest, you can't, what we can say, you can't uh, shut off, we say, just shut off. You can't shut off, meaning you, you just, your brain is doing something, but you can't do what yeah. you're supposed to be doing, like study. Okay, that's cool. Um, and Ricardo, what about you? Do you ever pull an all-nighter? Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. Can you repeat, please? No worries. Okay. Have you pulled an all-nighter recently? And this means, um, have you um, stayed up the whole night without sleeping for a reason? Many times. <laughs> I worked for 90, 90 years at, uh, at night. So I have a, a very easy to me to stay uh, uh, Wake up, wake up, no, no wake up. To stay awake, yeah? To stay awake. Stay awake at 2 or 3 uh, a.m. No problem, no problem. So it's okay for you, you can do it. And how do you feel the next day slash the next night, yeah? So the next evening, can you sleep well 
after okay. a moon item. Okay. Is it okay? So how do you feel the next day? Uh, uh, in the wiki days, I sleep about five hours. It's okay for me, okay? So it's not a, it's not very problem. Okay, yeah, so so it's okay, a bit like a bit like Hazel. Okay, so that's to pull an all nighter. Chow, can you suggest one that you've learned recently? An idiom or a slang, anything like this. Mm -hmm. Come back to me, I would Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Um, guys, you all, as as always, you don't have to answer if you don't have one off the top of your head. But we'll ju just see. Alex, have you got one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. for it. Alex, why oh, do yeah. I recognize your voice? You said we haven't spoken before, but I recognize your voice. <laughs> no, we haven't. Do what? you know you sound like a guy from Italy? You, there's a. Oh, what's his name? I haven't spoken Marcus? for ages. Sorry? Maybe Marcus? Could be. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I really recognize your voice. Anyway, Alex, go for it. Sorry. Okay, I can't. Oh, I forgot it. Oh, oh sorry. I, <laughs> I can. Oh, uh, I can't remember. We'll really. Come back to you. Sorry, no. sorry. Okay. And Camille. Hello. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Nice to speak with you. Um, firstly, can you correct my pronunciation and also uh, tell me where you come from? The age is mute. Sorry? The age is mute. I can hear. Yep, I can hear. Um, and how do I pronounce your name? Um, is it Hermilo? No, the age is mute. Oh, uh, uh, Milo. Er Milo. Er. Er. Milo. Milo. Er Milo. Okay, cool name. And where do you come from? Mexico. Mexico. Cool. It's uh, nice to meet you. We're talking about idioms and, sl and slang. Um, do you know any off the top of your head? So any slang. It can be American slang as well. Yeah, we'll try, um, and I'll see if I understand. So any slang or any idioms? No. <laughs> At this moment, I don't have one. No worries. Okay, we'll come back. Um, it's difficult to think we're under uh, under pressure, but okay. Hazel said to blow your own trumpet. Yes, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, uh, Ricardo, do you know this one? To blow your own trumpet. I'm worried about what, what people at health people answer. Okay, so Nihan, do you know this one? To blow your own trumpet. Blow your own trumpet. Yeah. Uh, I can I can guess. Maybe um, it's about uh, doing your job, uh, your uh, your own. Mm -mm, no. Maybe. Not not quite. No. Um, Chow, do you know? Blow your own trumpet. Uh, actually, we have the same idiom in Chinese. So maybe it means. Uh, the person just, uh, it's hard to describe it, it just show off his own exactly. own stuff and just exaggerate it and yeah, buy them by yeah. himself. Um, like a bit of, uh, likes to show off, yeah, to show off. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did really well, yeah, so for example if you get the top mark in your, um, in your class or, or whatever, yeah, 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 I did really well, look at me, yeah, so, uh, I, I, I actually I'm quite amazing, you could say. Um, I read this recently, um, who said this? But no, I read this very, very, very recently, it's like, yeah, I did so well, look at me, I'm really impressed. Um, I blew my own trumpet on Facebook, uh, because I met a geisha, yeah, so I was very happy about this. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I feel lucky, so I, I blew my own trumpet. Uh, but Alex, ha have you blown your own trumpet? Or do you like No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, I then not for Billy, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay, but you you understand the situation, and do you know yeah. how many people who do this, and what kind of things do they blow, or what? No, you can't say that. What kind of things do they um, like to show off about? I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the person, but really, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so but so I know what it means. But you you understand, okay? Yeah, and Hazel, do you like to blow your own trumpet? Of 
course not. Only once I uh, blow on my own trumpet when I uh, quit smoking because I was very proud of myself. <laughs> this was two years ago. Bravo. I know it was a horrible, uh, horrible <laughs> uh, behavior, but I uh, managed to quit smoking. And because you're very proud, as a result, you blow your own trumpet. You blew, you blew yeah. your own trumpet. Okay, so yes. that's that's natural. Um, Ermilo, I'm trying to remember your name, the pronunciation. But Ermilo, um, have you ever blown your own trumpet, or could you give us some examples of things that people could blow their trumpet over? Yeah, so or about. Uh, um, the point is that I cannot understand uh, the words that you are uh, talking. If no you worries. can write it, maybe. Sure. If okay. you can type it on the chat. To blow your own trumpet. Martin, is it an arrogant uh, way to say uh, this item? or? Oh, he's always blowing his own trumpet, yeah? So it's describing someone who's a little arrogant, yeah? But sometimes... But I will say about uh, quitting uh, the uh, smoking. It's not an arrogant thing. But if she said something like, oh yeah, I quit smoking, but you haven't, yeah? Something like this, this is like, mm. well, you look at me, yeah? So she's yeah. blown her own trumpet. It was uh, annoying sometimes because I was so proud and I keep repeating that I quit smoking, I quit smoking, in order to not uh, um, take up again cigarettes. Yeah. So maybe that's why I... Uh, I kept saying. The, th the thing is, sometimes it's quite useful because if you tell everyone, then you're uh, you're so embarrassed then to maybe go back to smoking. Yeah. So if everyone it, knows, if you if it, you blow your own trumpet, okay. sometimes it can be quite good. Oh, look at me! I've stopped smoking. Stop smoking. You then don't want to smoke again because everyone else thinks you know she's a bit of an idiot. Yeah. So. Yes, exactly. That's why I uh, <laughs> break myself practically. I show showed off. So some people do this just for that. So if I tell everyone, then that means I have to work harder at that, maybe. Okay, I don't know if that's uh, what people do here, but um, Sarah, are you there? Silence. Maybe uh, loading. Maybe it's just. It's loading. about um, to telling the other people how good and how uh, successful. Ex uh, how uh, beautiful you are. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like self-promotion, yeah? So, to a certain extent, uh, you have to do that, but it's, it's a blowing trumpet is where you're saying, look at me, I did this very, very well. Yeah? So, things like that would be blowing your own trumpet. I can give give you an, a good example. Uh, yes, the session is uh, just our Prime Minister <laughs> station. <laughs> okay, could you explain? He always... Uh, he always blow his own trumpet, and uh, he said, "My style is the best style. Uh, <laughs> my uh, my my thinkings, uh, my wishes is the best for you." So da David Cameron's a bit like this as well, yeah. So my party is for the power. Yes, yeah? so they always talk like this. Um, this kind of like yeah, blow your own trumpet. It's literally you don't need someone else to blow the trumpet for you. Yeah, you don't need but the praise from someone else. You give it yourself. Is it a uh, British expression, or is it more like? I think maybe universal. I think, I think it could be said in America, but don't quote me on this. But it's definitely said in the UK. Uh, but it sounds like a general one. It's not really like a specific. It doesn't okay. sound like it's just British, yes. Yeah? But I don't know. Um, we'll find out about that. One. Okay, so uh, Diana is there. Hello. It's butterfly. Butterfly, yes. Yeah, so I maybe I don't know. Okay, it's cool. Uh, and where's the other one? The, there's a new one. Um, I can't Hi. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Diana, perfect. Hi. Your name sounds like well, in the UK where it's spelled like this. I'm not sure if it's the same pronunciation. So Diana, is it Diana or De Diana? Diana. Diana. Diana, sí. Diana. Okay. And you said mm -hmm. C, so that means you speak Spanish. Um, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Colombia. Cool, okay, so nice to meet you. Um, we're talking about British slang, British uh, idioms and things like this. 
But you can say maybe some American ones as well, yeah? So a lot of you are more familiar with American. Um, I think at this time, usually it's just Americans that speak, right? Um, I think it's too early for British, maybe. I don't know. Okay, but anyway, so, Diana, welcome. Do you know of any expressions, any idioms or, or slang in British English? Me? Me? Yeah. yeah. Can you repeat, please? Sure. Do you know any um, slang or idioms in British English? I don't know what is a slime. Oh. Slang. No worries. I'll write this down. Not, not slime. I thought you said slime. That's something else. But slang. Slang. So kind of like street talk. Mm. I, I don't know. Oh. My English is bad. No worries. Don't, don't be under pressure. We'll come back to you, okay? I'll let you hear some other examples and we'll come back to you, okay? So don't, don't worry too much. Okay. Okay. Any more examples before I suggest some? I think I'll suggest some. Okay, cool. So I'm going to share my screen. There's a really, really good website. Hazel will know this and some others will know this. Um, so I'll send this to you now. Um, and it's very, very, very good. One second. No. Where have you gone? There you go. So if you could see this, this has so many. You can look at this in between classes as well. But some of them I honestly don't know. Yeah. So every time I look through this website, I always find ones that I just, just don't know. Yeah. So I'll tell you the ones maybe that, that are most common and um, that we use or that I would hear. Um, and also there's an idiom site which we'll look at um, in a minute. But what I want to ask you now is if you'd prefer to focus now on idioms or slang. So Ricardo, is it more useful to you uh, to learn slang or idioms? Uh, in many situations, uh, I ask it to to people don't use uh, don't use uh, slangs to me because I don't understand too much. Okay. No worries. So for you, you would prefer idioms. Yes. No worries. No worries. Uh, we we'll do a quick we we'll do a quick vote because um, it doesn't make sense to do something that's not useful. So Nihan, slang or idioms? Slang, exactly. Because uh, I watch many movies. And they use um, different I idioms. Okay, so for you, slang would be more useful. Um, Admiral, what would you say, slang or idioms? Uh, well, uh, uh, really, I, I do not know about slangs, uh, but let me see and the and the page you published. All right. Uh, yeah. British slangs. Dictionary of slang. Um, I don't know. Ace in the hall. Sorry, <laughs> what did you say? Ace in the hall. Ass in the hall. I ask what? There's hidden advantage that can be produced to win a game. So did you say ass? Could you write it down? No, Ace. Oh, Ace, Ace. Sorry, sorry, sorry. God, that's embarrassing. Sorry, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. OK, to Ace something, you can say, or to Ace in the hole. Yes. Let me check this. One second. Um, ace in the hole. Oh, OK, OK, OK. okay. Like this? golf, maybe like in golf. To be honest, I wouldn't say this. I'd say just to ace something, like here, yeah? So to ace something um, is very good, yeah? So I've aced it. I've done it very well. This would be like to blow your own trumpet, saying, oh, I aced the test. But ace in the hole, it, I, I wouldn't say. It's, for me, it sounds funny. You, you can say also, you nailed it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's better. That's even better. Yep, to nail something. To nail. <coughs> uh, I think uh, we have this in... In Spanish, like un as bajo la manga, and that means the same, exactly the same. Uh, it's uh, a hidden advantage that uh, anybody uh, have for to win a game or or something um, to have advantage over the other uh, over the other player. Do you, I don't know what you say to score an ace in that 
hold or to ace the... For me, I, I would say to nail it, yeah? So, like, um, I think it was Alex that said that to nail something just means um, to do it perfectly. Or someone else suggested to hit the nail on the head means if you have an argument and you make a very, 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 very good point, um, you'd hit the nail on the head, meaning you've got the argument perfectly. So you've, uh, what you've said is just exactly what people are thinking, to hit the nail on the head. Hit something perfect. Yeah, but usually with what you say with a comment in an argument. So if you have a very good argument, you'd hit the nail on the head. Or to nail something, To nail something, to do something perfectly, you've nailed it. Yeah? So I could say if you understand, for example, oh, you've nailed it. Um, also, sorry, lots of people are writing to me. I'll just make sure I answer your questions. Um, someone said, what's the difference between buddy and friend? Friend is just more formal, it sounds, yeah? He's my friend or he's my buddy. We would normally say in British English, mate. All the, si all the time, if you go to the UK, you'd hear mate, 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 mate. Even if they're not your friend, they'll go... Um, Something in the pub, they give you your, your drink, you say, oh, cheers, mate, to the worker. Or in the shop, oh, cheers, mate. Yeah? We always say mate. Okay, um, any more questions before I ask you lot? Um, mate? Yeah. And cheeky, yeah, okay, so Douglas says um, cheeky. Cheeky just means what, Hazel? Cheeky means uh, some uh, usually somebody who is not behaving uh, nicely. We say cheeky to children usually. Yep, oh, it's been it? cheeky. Yeah, it's kind of rude but not serious. So yeah. rude but in a kind of charming, funny-ish way. Yes, to children. And I think buddy is more American indeed. Chao asks on yeah. the chat. Isn't we'll definitely it? say mate. We'll say mate, I think, yes. for buddy. Um, but I also said funny-ish. So it's kind of funny-ish. Um, Nihan, could you explain what ish means? Uh, sorry, Martin. Uh, could you please repeat the question? Yeah. No worries. So I put, um, I said funny-ish, or yeah. I could say I was a bit uh, rude-ish. Do yeah. you know what ish means? Yeah, I know. Ch uh, childish, reddish. Kind we of. Use the, we use ish uh, to express not exactly the meaning, but it's similar. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So kind when I say cheeky is kind of, when someone is, 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 is kind of funny-ish, means um, it's not really funny, but it's a little bit funny, yeah? So it's, it's kind of rude, but in a funny-ish way. Yeah. Uh, Diana, did you understand this? Funny-ish, did you understand? Yes, it's clear, I guess. No worries. Okay, any time any of you got any questions, just uh, just pipe up. Okay. That's another one to pipe up. To ask. Uh, to pipe up just means say, yeah. So to, to to make a comment, to pipe up. So any time you've got any questions, just pipe up, meaning to say I have a question. Okay. Cool. So. Uh, Lucas says to have an ace up one's sleeve. Ermilo, do you understand this one? To have an ace up one's sleeve. Mm, really? I. <coughs> hey, I'm lost. <laughs> no worries, we'll find you. Uh, 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 all all of these words are new for me, uh, so. <laughs> are we going too I am quickly lost. for you? Are we going too quickly for you? I think it may, we, we are speaking quite quick, I, uh, particularly me today, maybe yeah. because I haven't spoken for two weeks with you guys. It's about maybe Martin's accent. That could be why as well, yeah? So this time usually there's not so many British people on, on Verbling, I know. Um, Hazel, do you normally have classes at this time? Sorry? Do you normally have classes at this time? No, no, I don't have normally classes on this time. Okay, yes, it's an exception. Okay, so uh, Milo, so to have an ace up one sleeve is just to have a very, very good idea um, in your head. So uh, you have a strategy. So for example, when you're playing a card game, you could have an ace up your sleeve, meaning you have a plan 
to win, to take the advantage. Okay? Yes. So, all right. Can I interrupt? Uh, Alex, uh, your typing is hearing uh, very noisy. I muted you, uh, but uh, you unmute yourself. I'm mute, so I don't think it's me. Um, it could be me. Is it me? I was typing. One second. So to have an ace up your sleeve just means to have an adva an idea which will give you an advantage, Hamilo. So, uh, can we create some examples? Ciao, do you have an ace up your sleeve? Mm. I don't know. Uh... You wouldn't tell us. If you really did, you wouldn't tell us, <laughs> would you? Because then we'll get the advantage. So, yeah. Okay, so no one wants to tell. Um, Hazel, do you have an ace up your sleeve? I don't know. I, I had the, at the beginning of the class because I knew several uh, idioms. <laughs> Maybe I can say the, that was my ace on my, up on my sleeve? Yes. Okay, so um, to have an ace up your sleeve would be, for example, before the class... Back. No, oh. right here. <laughs> you was kicked off, Martin. No, he's here now. You are. No, he, yes, no. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh. Okay. So to have an ace up your sleeve, for example, would be to read the class plan beforehand. Let's hope the verbing app is working, and to find out. Oh, we're doing slang. So Google slang, knowing that I'll probably ask you. And this will be your ace up your sleeve. You already have something prepared. So when I ask you, you have an advantage. You look smart. Like Hazel's strategy, yeah? So she's not yes. really smart. She just Googles. Yes. Joking. Joking. Oh, okay. oh, I, oh, I knew this one from another teacher. And <laughs> okay. I was prepared. Yes. So to prepare, yeah, that would be to have an ace up your sleeve. When you really, really prepare for something. Um, and yeah, you, are, you understand something. Good. Cool. Alex, do you have an ace up your sleeve right now? Do you have a strategy? No. <laughs> no, I don't. But <laughs> I understand it, but I don't have an, an, ace up, an ace up your on my sleeve. An ace, an ace up, up your sleeve. sleeve. So I don't have an ace up my sleeve. It could also be for things like um, if you're having a job interview. Yeah, so um, you don't maybe you don't write everything in your CV, um, and then when you get in the interview, you have something that you're ready to say at any moment, um, and then you say it, and you're like, he's like, oh, yes, yeah? so, or she's like, oh, wow, that's impressive. So that could be, it's a common way of saying, uh, oh, he had an ace up his sleeve, meaning he had it or she had it in his head or her head, um, and just revealed it at the perfect moment, yeah, to give them an advantage. Or it could be something like, so it could be a job interview or... Um, can anyone else think of any examples? So, Ricardo, examples, so um, situations. It could be a job interview where you'd need an ace up your sleeve. It could be, yeah, we talked about it, like an English class, you know, preparing materials in advance. Any other examples? Sports game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is perfect. Okay. Yeah, so, a football match, something like this. Um, you'd have an ace up your sleeve, usually. Um, well, I'm saying football because, you know, it's British, so easy for me to explain. But, um, yeah, so usually before they play, they come up with some kind of strategy of how they would tackle. So they come up with, they write on the board, like, right, what, what we're going to do is we're going to pass them over there and we're going to do this. They have some kind of strategy in advance for passing the, the football around, yeah, to, to, to score the goal. And that would be the ace. But they wouldn't reveal that at the beginning. They'll just reveal that at the perfect moment, which will give them that advantage. So they have it prepared. They're just waiting to, for the right time to use it. Okay? Or it could be any sport. So baseball or any sports game, you would have some kind of strategy to give you an advantage. Okay? Um, Hazel, can you think of like another example? Poker. Yeah, poker is another good one. And that's where it comes from, I think. Yeah? So the ace yes, is a yes, card. Yes. yes. And sleeve, uh, she, they, <laughs> when it, they treat a uh, trick. No. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. So if you you put an ace in your sleeve and they can, yeah. uh, do, if I say sleight of hand, do you know what this means? Sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. No. 
is when you bad, do yeah. bad hands. Yeah. The bad hands in poker. Yeah, no, it's just when you um you can do something with your hands, but you you do it so quickly that the other person doesn't mm. know what you're doing. So you have to cheat. Y yeah, you cheat, you use sleight of hand, somehow you've got the ace in your sleeve and you get out the ace without the other person knowing. And usually magicians can do this. So magicians can do this, um, poker stars, things like this, they can do something so quick with their hand that you don't notice what they're doing. So that would be sleight of hand, meaning so, so quick, cunning. Yes. You understand cunning? And this idiom com is coming from poker anyway, I think. Yeah, so to have an ace up your sleeve, I think so, because uh, when you play poker, you have this poker face, you've got to look very seriously, um, mm -hmm. but you always should have a strategy to get the advantage, okay? Er Miller. What happened yep. Please. What happened when uh, somebody discovered that uh, instead to be four aces and the cards, there are more? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> So you'd have to have a, another ace up your sleeve. So that, no, or you'd have to have one less ace up your sleeve. <laughs> yeah. For example, somebody can show that he has four aces. He won, but another another player has uh, maybe uh, one pair of aces too. So <laughs> if I the mean, if the if the guards just have four aces, why the other two? Yeah, I, I'm lost. But yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Amilo, have you played poker before? Have you have you played poker before? If I if I played yeah poker yeah mm, more or less, but I don't. I'm not very good for to play it. Okay, and the thing is, I couldn't play poker. Yeah, so I've tried just for fun, not for money or anything like this, with friends. But I couldn't play because this poker face, um, <laughs> I can't do. Yeah, I yeah, don't know if anyone else. To, I cannot act. Yes. yes. To, to if my hand is very strong, um, everybody knows, uh, everybody understands. Yeah. So. <laughs> and if my hand is a little bit slight, uh, everybody knows, and I cannot uh, a good p uh, poker face gamer. Yeah. So the poker face yeah. is this serious face that you've got to look. So someone cannot read your expressions. It's so blank. That no one can read. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, so um, Chow, you've got webcam. on, do a poker face. <laughs> do it I, I think I can't do it. Do it. Try. <laughs> no, you're moving your lips, so you're excited about something. So that means you've got a good card. Okay. <laughs> so, can anyone to read the expression of the other person? Yeah, is to be to have a poker face. If someone's got poker face, you can't read that expression. But if you can read their expression, they haven't got poker face. And we actually use this not just with poker. We use it to describe a person. Oh, he's always got a poker face. Or he's got a poker face, meaning I just can't understand what he's thinking or what she's thinking. So with mm -hmm. maybe a boss. Yeah? Or if you Sorry? Mm -hmm. With what, sorry? You have? My boss. Uh, he has a poker face. Yeah, so uh, I, I can't understand. He liked or uh, he hates the idea. It's always like that. Yeah. So, um, so if you suggest something, he will just look blankly. Um, and does anyone think Ricardo? Do you understand? So a poker face. And can you do a poker face? He's got one in this picture right now. Hmm. What's he thinking? <laughs> Ricardo. Hello, Marty. Cool. Okay, so poker face. Did you understand? Um, Lady Gaga wrote a song about it. Yes, yeah? so that's how important it is. Lady Gaga wrote a song. Okay, so Ricardo, do you understand what poker face is? No, I don't know. All right. Um, it's just a blank expression with well, with with no expression. Yes. Yeah? So you just you don't know what that person's thinking. Some maybe some psychologist can work it out, but the normal person cannot work it out what you're thinking. Um, and you would give a poker face when you don't want other people to know your true emotions. Okay? Like, for example, a boss. Yeah? Wants to stay mm, like a boss. Yeah? Or who else? Well, it's very useful uh, in sh uh, shopping. 
because uh, when you like very much uh, something, uh, uh, they c you cannot bargain uh, to the price. Uh, you have a poker face. Yeah, you like. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Yes, this. Uh, you like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm, but um, can yeah. you do it, Nihan? So you do it with shopping. I thought you'd say that. Yeah, Something yeah. Cool. I can do it in shopping because I'm a very, very uh, hard uh, bargaining. Uh, I like uh, bargain uh, about the price. Yeah. Not everywhere, but I can do it uh, to the shopkeeper. Okay, Beautiful. so so with shopping you can give a poker face, but what about at work? So with your boss, for example, can you counter his ballot, uh, his poker face with another? I'm learning. Person? I'm learning. It's not very well, but I'm yes, uh, very difficult because my boss uh, is very scary man. <laughs> I'm okay. learning. So it's it's, it's difficult. Um, Hazel, wait, wait, wait. I heard Japanese people usually smile all the time. So you, well, I, I, to be honest, I have this problem. Yes, yeah? so, um, I don't know. Yeah, I think I don't know. Chow, what, what about Chinese people? Yes. Yeah? So, um, are you in the street? Do you have this kind of poker face, or with service, for example? Uh. I don't know, but it it was strange that when you on the street and you smile on the way. Okay, yeah. So, um, do you do you smile on the way? Nope. I. Oh, let me think. Sometimes, sometimes some good thing happen to me. Oh, no, I. Yeah, I just. I have. I've noticed. I've noticed. I had some kind of London face. <laughs> so only in London, because for, for me, London stresses me out completely. Yeah, so I like London, but it stresses me out. So I have this kind of London face, which is probably quite blank and quite quick. Yeah, so I move very, very quick. When I'm in London, I walk so, so quickly, more than normal. And I've noticed I have some kind of a London face. Uh, I don't know if it's poker face or what. Um, does anyone have this? Maybe if they're in the city. Um, I mean, Hazel, what's it like if you go to your capital city? Do you find it stressful? Do you have some kind of... Yes, I lived uh, many years there, and I learned and worked there several years. But uh, I liked the, that period. But now I I think it's very stressful. It's uh, so um, so many people, so many cars. I I I, w I cannot live anymore in a capital city now. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and would you say in the capital city, lots of people have a poker face? Oh, so in London, it's all, always this. The people are always. On the no, no. Like in, 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 no Turkey, in, my, in my country, no, because uh, R Romanians are Latin people. British people are different from uh, my uh, my people. Yeah. I think. So, in terms of the character, uh, Latin yeah. people may be more expressive. Things like this. Exactly. Exactly. But the, if you want to know, uh, well, I, well, from what I've noticed, it's not everyone, of course, but a lot of the, the London people do have this kind of yes, very stern, They're like yes. Like, yeah, so it's just kind they of they usually don't show their feelings. I no. think, in my opinion, I yeah, don't know. I would you, say so. Know better. And it's this kind of perfect. And I have to say, I don't have this, but my face does get more maybe pokerish uh, when I'm in London because everyone else is like that, and it kind of rubs <laughs> off on you. And Hazel, you said you're going to London. Maybe this will be the same with you. We'll see. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, so poker face. Any questions, Alex? No. <laughs> okay. Ciao. Any questions? Anyone else have any questions or any comments they would like to make? No. Good. Okay. So let's go to the next one. one second. So, in fact, we're going to go to the idiom page, and um, not the slang page which I sent you. Uh, we've talked a, a bit about them before, some of these, but I'm just going to choose a completely random one. In fact, we'll go to the the bottom. Uh, to wipe the floor with someone. Yes. So to wipe the floor with some someone or with something. When you say very uh, bad things to uh, somebody, I think you wipe the floor with uh, that person. Yeah, so you wipe the criticize floor. Criticize very much, criticize very much usually, no? It's like you defeat them. You defeat them so much, uh, you wipe the floor with them. You beat them in their argument, you beat them with everything. You wipe the floor with them. It's very rude, yeah? But it's, it's said, ah, oh, I wipe the floor with... You could say, I wipe the floor with my teacher, 
if, for example, the teacher's made a mistake um, and you correct that teacher, you say, oh, I wipe, wipe the floor with. Yeah, people <laughs> say this. Um, so it's not always about serious things, but literally wipe the floor with maybe you've had a fight. Yeah, and you've won. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can anyone relate to this? So, Chow. <laughs> you know the question. Have you wiped the floor with anyone? No, no one would say this, would they? But actually, it, yeah, I, you, you have. <laughs> yeah. When I was in high school, I often, I, I prefer to do it, uh, just like you said, to correct the teachers. And but when I got to the university, I just don't do it anymore. Let the teachers wipe the floor with you. Yeah. So that's different. <laughs> um, but I think it's so at, at school and stuff. Um, Alex, what are you like at school? Were you a, a little know-it-all? But we say know-it-all, yeah? So without the teeth, know-it-all. Alex, can you hear? Yeah. Were you a it's little right. know-it-all? Can you understand my accent? Yeah, maybe just difficult. Were you a little <laughs> know-it-all? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have wiped the floor, um, with who? With teachers or what? With parents? Also with parents, you can. No, with my teachers, but not really a lot. Just a little bit. <laughs> have you got some examples? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of them, but <laughs> I'm I don't know. Um, I remember having my my English teacher. And she was like saying bad things about American English, saying that like bad things about American English. And I remember talking to her. No, she wasn't Spanish. She is a Spanish still. Mm. But anyway, um, I remember arguing with her because like it's not true. Like um, it's just different, yeah. So it's like yeah, <laughs> like there is. Nothing wrong with American or British or Australian or whatever. So it was like she thought I was trying to wipe the floor with her, but I wasn't. I was trying to, you know, <laughs> just defend you know, her a little bit. Yeah. So just to yeah. But I have to say, yeah, Alex, like, you have a slight. It's very very interesting. Your accent is perfect, uh, but you have you do have slight American pronunciation, and I want to know how you learnt it. I uh, I was living in the U.S. for a while. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Cool. Okay, so uh, Chow has uh, Hazel. Were you a little know it all? Sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, my accent. Were you a little know it all? I I I can't understand what you say now. You're like what? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, <laughs> A little know it all, meaning when you're oh, uh, yes, when yes. you're young, I know, you know, I know. You no, know all, no all. You said know it all. Uh, no, know no it all, or uh, how would you say know it all? Know it all. Um, I don't think so. Only when I was little, in um, second or third grade, I was a little um, know it all person. But uh, later, I don't think. Okay, lately, now, but when you were younger, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's cool. Um, Ermilo, what about you? Were you a little know-it-all? Oh, I can't say it now. Little, I'll just say it correctly. Were you a little know-it-all? Um, a little nervous? No, it just means, yep, yeah, Hazel, could you explain? Know it all. Know it all to know um, uh, everything and to show off. You think you know everything, yeah? So yes. uh, you know it all. Uh, you, you, as a student, you correct the teacher at school, for example. No, I, I don't know what, what you're talking about. No worries, no worries. Um, so, no, uh, Mil I cannot yeah. understand. So he's not. He's not, yeah? Okay. Ciao, <laughs> could you explain? Um, again, so Hazel explained. Could you explain in other words? Uh, what it means to be a know-it-all. So, he uh, he pretend he know everything in the world, and he just tell everyone that the others is wrong, and his own knowledge, his own thought is right, and to 
try to correct everyone to show off himself. Yeah. So um, is thinking that he knows everything or she knows everything, he or she. Guys, often, don't be offended, but often I'd say he when I mean he and she, yeah? So don't think, oh, he's being sexist. But often I would say, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, he knows. But it, it no means worries, he, Martin. It's okay. Maybe I, said, I should say she because she has he in it, yeah? So, okay. Anyway, so um, when he or she, it's just long to say that, yeah? So when he or she um, thinks he knows yeah. everything, correct someone who should have more knowledge than that person. So a teacher should have more knowledge than the student, um, but a know all would think that they have more knowledge than the teacher. Yeah? And this is a know it all? And that's a know it all. Yeah? So a know it all means would often correct the teacher. So when you were at school, Emilio, did you often correct the teacher? Did you say, teacher, you are wrong? Yeah, but I say uh, this is the meaning of know it all? Yes. To be a know-it-all. Uh, it's to like be that it, person, it, yeah. Can we say it's a, like uh, somebody pretend to be wise? Yeah, they no. they uh, well they not pretend to be wise, but they pretend to be wiser in that particular situation than the other person. Yeah. Yeah. Of so, course. for example, yeah, uh, Milo, you said yeah. you're from. Colombia, right? You're from Colombia. No, you no. forgot it. Oh God! Wait, Brazil. <laughs> Brazil. No, not not not. Mexico, not Mexico, 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 Mexico. Ah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. So, if I you were won, to, you won at the third. I'm definitely not know all there. <laughs> okay, so, um, Emily, if I said to you, "Ah, oh, Mexico," I've watched the documentary about Mexico. I know that in Mexico, you do this, 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 this. And you say to me, no, it's not true. And I say, well, yes, it is true. I know. Yeah, I will be a little know-it-all because I've never been to Mexico, but I act like I'm an expert. Yeah? So uh, you are the one with knowledge. You live in Mexico. You're from Mexico. But I try to pretend I have more knowledge than you, and I try to argue with you. I say, actually, no, Mexico is this, 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 this. And I would act like a know-it-all, okay? okay? The, the, the same thing that you are uh, describing is uh, uh, already happened with somebody uh, that I was, I was teaching Spanish to somebody, yeah. but this, this, other, this other somebody uh, told me that I was wrong because Spanish is not spoken as I was, I was uh, doing. <laughs> I I I I only laughed. Uh, yeah. I, I I began to laugh because uh, you because are you're it, uh, it is my it is my my my, my native my native language. So uh, how how could I do not uh, know how to speak Spanish? Yeah. It, it is it is it is the same if I if I try to to correct you with your English. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. You can do that. Sometimes I I would need this. Yeah. So. No. But, uh, um, yeah, sorry, Alex. Yeah, it is true that when when in the language is your native, um, sometimes you you just do you just make some mistakes that like even when you're a native speaker of the language, it's just wrong. Like particularly with <laughs> like saying, British people. Like, yeah, so with, with us, or, we do this. I'm not sure about you, Alex. What? I was saying, particularly uh, British do this. We do this because um, the way we pronounce is different, um, and it's particularly with writing. Yeah, we make. I've talked about this a lot, maybe before, but we make a lot of uh, mistakes when writing because the way we pronounce is not so clear sometimes. Like saying "would have done this." Yeah, we write "would of" rather than "would have." That's a common one. There's lots. Yeah, so we <coughs> make these mistakes. But I don't know, uh, Alex. You speak Spanish. Um, yes. Yeah, it... What's the yeah. difference then? Is there a big difference between? Um, Mexican Spanish and Spanish Spanish. Uh, it's different in the words, but not really. I mean, an accent, but not really, not grammatically talking. You know, what like, about like idioms and slang, like we're doing British idioms and slang. Yeah, is it a bit like <laughs> that, that? Is, that is completely different from okay. Mexican Spanish. Okay, so that's cool. It's interesting. Okay, so uh, George. Is, yep. Yeah. Do, do you know speak Spanish? No, I don't. 
Ah, uh, okay. But um, you teach Spanish, right? Uh, uh, this is because uh, the words that uh, the other the other person tried to correct me was was this. I was telling him about how to say uh, thank you very much in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> so I said uh, muchas gracias. But the other oh, person said, mucho, said, oh, you you are, you are wrong. It is not it is not in that way. It is muchos gracias. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so okay. things like this. Yeah? Okay. So this can be the same between British and American. That's why I asked because it, it can be so with British and American. I could say something that in America doesn't make sense or vice versa. Yeah, so that's probably similar. Okay, it's interesting, guys. I've got to go for the next class. It's going to be about phrasal verbs. So it's going to be not similar but appropriate for you guys. Um, so hopefully you can join in. But if not, have a good day. Um, slash sleep if you're sleeping now, and we'll speak soon, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 See you.